The nice thing about living in the hostel was that, despite the thin walls, it was often perfectly silent. That does not seem likely for a bunch of young twenty-somethings. People were often working or at school, so it was easy to find peace and quiet. This is England. No one goes to school. They just party all the time. It was quiet enough to hear the birds outside my window, the wind howling through the cracks in the wood. Quiet enough to hear the footsteps in the hallway, rapid, heavy footsteps, like someone was on a mission. Oh god, this isn't... A relentless pounding beat at my door, and in the time it took me to stand up from my desk and cross the room, it grew several decibels louder. Yeah, I was afraid about that. I pulled open the door to find Peggy on the other end, eyes electric. Okay, Piggy, I need your help. Sign my petition, please. What is your fucking petition? Is your petition dumb as shit? It's gonna be dumb as shit, isn't it? Um, what? See, our uni is far, far behind the times as far as the green movement goes. <laughs> You'd think a place of intellectualism and education would be concerned about the future of the world, the future of its very patrons, but no. Right. Okay. You mean... Uh... You mean just essentially... Holy shit, why can't I think of the Global warming! Okay, sweet, right. I don't know, I could only think of medio ambiente. Jesus Christ, I was thinking Spanish for a second. Right, okay, I thought she meant weed. So, that's <laughs> like... Mmm. <laughs> it's England. Good luck. No, it is left to those of us with common sense, desire and passion to find a way to get our world out of this ridiculous predicament it's in. Our way of life is totally unsustainable. There's no way we'll be living like we do now in 30 years. Yeah, I said that 20 years ago. Right now, we are pumping out cheap clothes just to throw them away in a year. We are stripping the, sol the soil of nutrients to grow food that we mostly waste. See, global warming is definitely an issue. We're not going to be living like fucking cavemen in 30 years. Like, come on now. Like, it's, <laughs> it's not going to fucking happen. If we go on like this, nothing will grow. The sea will rise. The sea rise will drown the coastlines and will have nothing to eat but insects. But you can't eat insects. But you can bet your bollocks will be sorry that nobody invested in clean energy and we ended up running out of fossil fuels. But we are investing in clean energy. That's a thing that's happening, Peggy. That, that, that's real. Whoa, whoa, okay, I get it. She really could get carried away. So, uh, what's the petition for exactly? It's gonna be something ridiculous. I want the university to commit to using more renewable energy sources. London completely ignores solar power because of cramped roof spaces and poor weather. But we have big buildings and we can make it work. London wasn't exactly the sunniest place in the world, but what did I know? Please, please, please sign it. I know you're the kind of person who believes in changing the future. I do, just not the way you appear to be. <laughs> I... Ugh the phrase, isn't it? Oh, if we keep doing this, we'll run out in 20 years. It's like, I mean, will we really? <laughs> Nobody else has signed it, so... She looks so sad saying it that I couldn't help but take pity on her. Sure, I'll sign. Oh, thank God, it didn't give me a choice. Yes, get in. I'm genuinely happy about that. I didn't want to have to say no. The way she was dancing around and punching the air, you'd think she just entered a gladiatorial arena and managed to make it out alive. Do you think you might... Do me another favour. No, fuck off. I'm not recruiting more people on this stupid petition for you. That depends a bit on the favour. Would you help me get signatures from everyone here? For some reason, I can't seem to sit anyone down long enough to talk to them. Yeah, weird that. Probably because when she starts preaching, she lost track of her targets and they all ran away. I mean, she meant well. She's just a little over-enthusiastic. A softer approach might work better, if I were willing to take the time to help Peggy out. No, fuck off. I have something to study for, so if you don't mind... Oh, yeah, that's okay, I understand. It was like I smacked a puppy dead in the face. Look! I already signed fucking petition. I'm not gonna be roped into getting more people to sign it. God, I already did my part. Well, I'll see you around then. I'll find people to sign this, no matter what. And her fire was back. I watched her stomp off down the hall, then return to my room with a grateful sigh. I don't even know who I'm going for at this point. <laughs> Oh, something about the phrase, we won't we won't be living the way we are in 30 years, literally triggers the shit out of me. The university library hit its own textbox! That's incredible! 
The university library was a little less friendly than the ones I'd usually seen in America. What? What, is there a gospel church in other libraries? People clap whenever someone comes through the door? How can a library be less friendly? Back home, even the high school students could visit a campus library and take notes and check references, although they'd need special permission to check anything out. I'd done papers for history class that way. Here, the whole library was behind a security gate that needed a university ID to get through. There were multiple lanes of in-out traffic, like on the underground, but it could still make an awful bottleneck at a busy time of day. I'd vaguely heard about a scandal where a guy stole rare old books from a British library to sell at an online auction. Maybe that's why they were so tight on security. I mean, yeah, probably. Why would that ever... What? You're annoyed that there's more security in a public library, so only university students can access a university library without needing, like, special permission. I... Ugh, whatever. Hmm. Didn't Mark say he hung out here a lot? Maybe I should try and find him. I don't want to find Mark. <laughs> can we find someone, like, who isn't a twat? Which section should I look in? I mean, he's the philosophy type, isn't he? It's probably the nicest way I can point out that he's a twat. I should look in biology. I looked around the biology section and spotted Danny sitting at a table. Oh, right, okay. Computing. <laughs> Literature. And then philosophy is Mark. Yep, of course it fucking is, right, biology, I guess. The other two don't really lead to anything. I looked around the biology section and spotted Danny sitting at a table. He looked really busy with his studies though, better not bother him. I should just find my own books and go. What? What? I don't want to see him with Mark. Oh, whatever. Hey, Oggy Piggy. What? No. As soon as I walked in the door, I see accosted me. I... She said hello. Head to room 304. I guess vomited all over the floor and they need someone to clean it up. She grinned and I nodded sullenly. She always gave me the most disgusting jobs. What did I ever do to her? Do you really need the answer to that question? Other than that one thing. But that wasn't my fault. There was nothing I could do now, but go along with it. Sure. What? That was the whole day. Wow, how majestic. As I entered the hostel common room, I spotted G. Hio inside. She had told me she was living here, but it was the first time I'd actually run into her here, so to speak. I might have expected an artist to relax on one of the colourful bean bags, but she was perched on the sofa, leaning forwards like a student trying to memorise the notes on a board. There are literally still tears in the walls, which is... I, I can't tell whether the walls have fallen out, but judging by like the indents here where you can see shadow, it looks like part of the wall has fallen out and not the paint. So an actual chunk of wall has fallen off. Also, these shadows look a little... Mm. I might, uh, yeah, anyway. Coming closer, I realised she had a sketch pad in her lap. She must have been working on something. Um, is it alright if I watch TV? What? Sorry to disturb you. I'm not disturbed. No, not disturbed. So, do you mind if I turn the TV on then? It's fine. I took a seat not too close and turned on the set, so I kept the sound low. I snuck a peek or two at Jihio just to be sure I wasn't bothering her, but her attention seemed completely focused on the paper in front of her. She must be good at tuning out the rest of the world. Well, that or she finds you so annoying that she's choosing not to pay any attention to you at all. It's probably that. Thinking that, I relaxed and watched my show. BBC programs didn't have commercial breaks exactly, but they did run a few promotions for other shows between time slots. I leaned back and yawned and caught Chi Hayo staring right at me. What? What? Did I do something strange? No, I... Sometimes I stare into space when I'm thinking. Do you always dress with a beret out of interest? Is the beret completely necessary? As the Velma Scooby-Doo glasses, like... Those are necessary, I uh, don't know, I guess you are an art student. Oh, I've done that. I didn't mean to make her feel awkward. So, um, what are you working on? <laughs> I didn't mean to make her feel awkward. Oh, I sometimes stare at people. Oh, like, yeah, you really nailed the hammer home. A study. Something you're studying for class. No, a study, a preparation, planning for a painting. Oh, I see, what are you going to paint? I don't know. She stood up. 
Like, the ideas just come to me, you know? You dig? I dig? God, no. Uh, right. Sure. You can't control where the inspiration goes, yo. <laughs> Please stop saying that. Sorry. She picked up her sketch pad and left the room. I hope I hadn't upset her, but I found her a bit hard to understand. Yes, the, she, she is still an art student. Man, the scenes are hella short in this game. Oh, bugger off. I passed by Angelo in his hall. His shirt seemed oddly lumpy. I, I, I sort of guess. Angelo? He jumped a small ball of yarn and two knitting needles fell out from under his shirt. You saw nothing. I saw nothing. He hurried away. Should I? No, I think it's better to just leave that one alone. Do I have such little defection points with everyone that I'm just not getting scenes where op like options should be available? Like Peggy was the only one I'd be nice to and then I told her to fuck off with her petition. <laughs> RIP. Peggy, Danny, Angelo and I were all eating lunch in the dining room when James loped through the doorway. You four, the yard is a mess. Are you gonna leave it like that? Pardon? That's not our responsibility, is it now? Yes, it is now. I'm gonna clean by midnight or I'm throwing you out of your rooms. That's definitely illegal. There, there is no possible way that he could do that. We could just hire a lawyer for this shit. With that, he left. He gotta be serious. He's not serious, right? You all haven't been here as long as I have. This is my second year. I'm sad to say he's done much worse. So immediately after eating, we discarded our plans for the day and we went to the front yard. Oh, let's face it, you're just going to be watching, like, Sherlock on BBC anyway. <laughs> I joke, Sherlock's not going to be on in the middle of the afternoon. You're going to watch antiques programs, because that's all that's fucking on on the BBC. That and, like, property programs, like, ugh, unoffensive, dull as shit TV. Despite the fact that it was one of the middle, uh, you can look that up, tvguide.co.uk, there's, there's, if you're watching this at a reasonable time for England, there's probably either a property show or an antique show on. Despite the fact that it was the middle of the winter, scraggly weeds were visibly growing over the flower beds and clumping up here and there in the grass. Hang on, did he call it the front yard? Did he call it the yard? This dude's supposed to be English, isn't he? The yard? The fuck's a yard? This is England, damn it! Fucking yard, mate, that's a garden is what that is. It's a front garden. It's not even that mess at all, it's perfect. Fucking yard, get out of here with your American heebie-jeebies. I stared at them, unsure of what to do. I didn't really have a garden back in New York. Danny Shrug got down on his knees and started pulling plants out of the ground. After a second, the other two went to different areas of the lawn and followed suit. I wasn't really confident enough to do it on my own. Who should I join? You have to be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. You don't have enough confidence to grab a weed and pull it up. It's not hard. Yeah, whatever. I kneeled down next to Danny. <laughs> not for the last time in this game, I imagine. And grabbed the first plant I saw. Whoa, whoa, not that one. That's a flower on the way, see? He grabbed the stalk of the plant and lowered it towards me. Tiny white bulbs clung to its end. Oh, I'm sorry. You're fine. Here, come take my place. I'll find the other ones. I shifted into his position, brushing against his arm as I did so. Holy, Danny, you're ripped. Hang on, how did you tell that? By brushing against his arm. You brushed against his arm and it was just like, oh my god. You have scales. Ha, of course I am. You can't do sports all day without getting a bit of muscle, right? I mean, there's a different... There's a difference between a bit of muscle and ripped. You're smart, fit, cute, and reliable. Come on, there must be something wrong with you. I grinned, but Danny's smile faltered. Uh, I'm sorry, I... Oh, there's plenty wrong with me, no worries. Jesus, what was that face? <laughs> Are you auditioning for a Tim Burton film? What the hell is that? My god. But really, we should be weeding, let's go. There was a note of finality to what he said, so I nodded and got to work. Hours later, we sat exhausted on the front walkway, wiping sweat from our brows. James came around from the front, sipping from an orange drink in his hand. He glanced around the yard and nodded. It'll do. The alcohol on his breath almost stung my eyes. He jerked his head and we moved out of his way and he could get to, so he could get to the hostel. Wow, weird to think someone who dresses like that could be an alcoholic, huh? 
I hate that guy. Somehow, as a collective, we sighed. You're not the only ones. Yeah. Sod that dude. Grr. But it's not called a fucking yard. <laughs> I was on my way back to the hostel when I saw something jammed into the front door. It was Danny's penis net. Was that really the end of a volleyball net? Why would someone be drag trying to drag a volleyball net inside? Bloody worthless piece of crap tilt already. Oh. I decided to walk around the block a bit more before going back to my room. These are definitely scenes we're missing out on because we've chosen wrong options, which is weird, because I, I thought I'd appeased Angela rather well throughout. I passed by Jahio in the hall carrying a large canvas what? Uh. Hi. She jumped down she jumped when she saw me, scrambled to hide the painting she saw. Uh, she was holding, dropped it, picked it up, rammed it into her still closed door, clawed at the door handle until she got it open, threw the canvas inside and shut the door. I stared at her. She opened the door again and followed her canvas into the room, closing the door firmly behind her. Right. It's either her naked or dick pics. <laughs> 